coming up on Rhythm and Roots. Join us as we celebrate America's mountain music heritage with Virginia's White Top Mountain Band. It's a privilege to be able to do something that's so much fun. It gives you a real pride in the region. You realize what a special area you live in. You can call it mountain music or old time music or bluegrass music. We'll trace its origins back to America's colonial days. All coming up on Rhythm and Roots. Won't you please welcome Southwest Virginia's most popular dance band, the White Top Mountain Band. Thank you. Thank you, Julia. We're so glad to be here today to play for y'all. And we're going to start with one called Keep My Skillet Good and Greasy All the Time. <laughs> For generations, the Appalachian communities of Virginia have produced an extraordinary number of world-class musicians. In this remote and tight-knit region, music is very often a family affair. So I'm here with Emily Spencer, the matriarch of White Top Mountain Band. Uh, thanks for joining us today. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you for having us. We're glad to be here today. So tell me about White Top Mountain Band. Well, Albert Hash, who is our brother-in-law and a fiddler and a fiddle maker, he and some of his neighbors started the band back in the 1940s. They had a band they called the White Top Mountain Band, and they was pretty popular. And in the 70s, it sort of built back up with Thornton and myself, that's my husband. Albert had passed away and we've sort of changed members till now we, we are a family band again with our daughter and her fiance playing with us and our friend Debbie. Keep my skillet good and greasy all the time, time, time. Keep my skillet good and greasy all the time. Thank you. We met the White Top Mountain Band on a concert tour called Music from the Crooked Road. The Crooked Road is a real road, Highway 58 in Virginia, and it winds from the eastern slopes of the Blue Ridge to the coal fields of the Cumberland Mountains to the west. The mountainous region of Western Virginia was settled in the early 18th century, around 150 years after the first Europeans arrived in the New World. European settlers migrated from Northern Virginia, enslaved Africans arrived from the Tidewater regions of coastal Virginia. This was America's first frontier, a place where the European violin met the African banjo, a remote region where the music and the culture percolated for many generations. So really it was the music that brought you to this very unique region yes. called the Crooked Road. Yes. Can you tell us what that means? What is the Crooked Road? Well, the Crooked Road is sort of named after the highway that goes through our area, especially where we live. I will say we live on the most crooked part of the Crooked <laughs> Road, which is Highway 58. There wasn't no electricity until uh, 1949 or 50. People more or less had to entertain themselves, and the uh, older music got passed over from one generation to the next. The music is such a part of just the way of life around there. So there's so many fiddlers, so many banjo players. It's just kind of something that's just a way of life almost everyone plays. It almost when you'd be surprised like at the gas station, <laughs> you've got a champion fiddler. Also, there are a lot of 
venues, I guess you might say, and things like fiddlers conventions and different places where they have square dances and so on that's kind of maybe helped to keep the music alive. You'll have children there or people in their 90s in our area are still dancing and um, you don't need a partner to dance to flat foot. It's a very, very much an intergenerational thing. You'll find people 70 year old playing with you know teenagers and so forth. It's just something that kind of keeps the community alive and it's just your music, kind of your culture, your pride. One time people get into it, they enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs>'bout the instrumentation that you find in old time and mountain music? Usually fiddle, banjo, guitar, a bass, and a mandolin are pretty usually pretty common. Basically stringed instruments. Strictly strings. So you're getting pretty your much. percussion from your stringed mm -hmm. instruments. Mm -hmm. I used to be a lover, baby in my younger day. But I still got my loving way. It's here in my younger days. Why isn't there a piano or a drum? What, what is it that made the strings um, the focal point of this music? You know, the portability of them, I'd say, would be part of the reason. And it's, and it's just really what's found in the tradition. What about the drums? The drums they never did use, I don't know why. So as a musician, what's it like to play in a, a group that doesn't have the traditional percussion set up? It's pretty traditional not to have drum set in the music that we play. A lot of the times the mandolin is kind of percussive and it kind of acts as the offbeat in the rhythm in the rhythm section. Like usually when I play with a band, I usually try to kind of lock in with a bass player because the bass player will be playing the downbeat. What is the role of the upright bass in the overall ensemble? It holds all the music together. What makes that rooster grow at the break of day? You can play just behind the beat, you can play right on the beat, or you can push the beat. Well, that's to let the rounder know the working man is on his way. So let's talk about the mandolin. It's such a beautiful instrument. I understand it's handmade. Yeah, yeah, this is a handmade, uh, it's called the F5 mandolin. In the 1920s, Gibson had made a mandolin that was for orchestra. I guess it never really did catch on with, with classical players. And when Bill Monroe decided he was going to start playing one of these, he um, kind of popularized it. And ever since then, it's become a bluegrass instrument. Well, that's to let the rounder know 
the working man is on his way. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> The violin has existed in one form or another for centuries, but the modern violin as we now know it took shape in northern Italy in the mid-1500s. Antonio Stradivarius crafted his masterpieces in the early 18th century, around the same time that Europeans were settling in the mountains of Virginia, where it was then called the fiddle. Italian violins were handed out as prizes in fiddle contests in Virginia as early as the 1730s, one of the first well-known fiddlers to emerge from the region was Thomas Jefferson, America's third president. Historians are convinced the banjo has its roots in West Africa. The earliest banjo-making skills arrived in the New World with enslaved Africans, who undoubtedly built the first banjos in Virginia. Thomas Jefferson wrote in his journal about an instrument his enslaved Africans played, with a gourd body and a head made of animal skin. Emily Spencer will help us learn about the banjo's evolution, with a little help from a friend who lives just down the Cricket Road. So we're joined now by Kurt Suffin, the master banjoist and fiddler, and we have here three different banjos, so we'd like to talk about, can you tell us a little bit about the history and um, what makes all of these different? Well, two of the banjos here are fretless. The gourd banjo is the first example of a banjo. And so the back of this is actually a gourd. <laughs> While Kirk plays the same tune, listen to the subtle differences in tone between the ancient fretless gourd banjo and Kirk's modern day version of a fretless banjo, a precursor to the fretted banjo Emily plays. difference between your banjo and the banjo that Kirk is holding? It's actually one that's got an internal resonator is what's, what this is called. Mm -hmm. So it's made a little bit differently in the back. It, it's got a little bigger tone ring which is like a metal part that you can't really see that's up under here. Mm -hmm. And it's made out of curly maple so that, that's mm -hmm. probably a little bit different wood than, than Kurt's is made out of. And it's got a plastic head on it which makes it it, it doesn't really have the sound of a skin head. It doesn't, it's mm -hmm. kind of a little more louder, harsher tone. Now the style that you play is the claw hammer style, right? Can you explain that to us? Well, this is like the, an older style of banjo playing. Probably, I would say, has roots in the oldest style in this country. And it's a down picking style. I pick with the back of my nail mm -hmm. and my thumb, and I'm always going down. There's no question that the Crooked Road is a region rich in musical talent. But it's remarkable that so many of the region's musicians have a separate talent. They make many of their own instruments by hand. 
The Virginia mountains are blessed with forests of hardwood trees that are ideal for making instruments. Some of them date back to the Ice Age. The region has become famous for crafting some of the best handmade instruments in the world, and that talent is still evident today. beautiful fiddles, the, the one that you're holding and the one over there. Can you tell us about those? I handmade both of these fiddles from scratch pretty much. Spruce is one of the strongest conifer woods, so it's perfect for making soundboards. It's real light and strong, so it carves real well. All my tops are white top spruce. Um, they just come from the mountain from behind my house. Jackson did like carved a rooster on the top for me because I kind of wanted something a little different. Mm -hmm. Usually you have like, you know, your scroll there, but um, like a lot of people in our area have done some different heads, like, you know, parrot says, and I never seen one with a rooster. This piece of maple came from, a fella came down, I guess, like 30, 40 years ago and brought a bunch of maple down from Michigan. And he was a fiddle maker and he got some wood off of his father who was a fiddle maker. And he passed this down to Wayne. I think Wayne Henderson got some, Albert Hash got some, Thornton got a piece, which this was actually a piece Thornton got. Um, like 30 years ago or something like that, he got it and he tapped on it and he said this was the best piece he found. He gave it to Martha for me to make a fiddle for her. So this piece of wood is probably about 150 years old. Anytime you talk to builders, when they can work with wood that's got a story behind it, you know, it's, it's definitely a special thing. play for audiences that are not familiar with the music, that are not from the region, uh, what kind of reactions do you get? We've been very well received, I think, everywhere we've been, but people have come up and they said, we had no idea what we were going to hear and we just can't tell you how much we've enjoyed this evening I wished it would never end. If you can get it to the people, they usually like it, even if it's something that they haven't heard in the past. This one's named after the Lee Highway that runs all the way through the state of Virginia. We're gonna lose those Lee Highway blues. See if we can get down on the Crooked Road. And if y'all get down on the Crooked Road, y'all come and see us. We'd be glad to see ya. All right. <laughs>
travel a lot. You know, we've been to Australia three years in a row. We've been to Ireland twice and England twice and stuff like that. So we're definitely spreading it around quite a bit. A lot of people are amazed at, oh, you play with, you know, your grandparents, you know. And it's really something that, you know, gives you real pride in the region. You realize how, what a special area you live in. A privilege to be able to do something that's so much fun. One of the most important things to me is to see the music survive and see other young folks picking it up and you know just getting the music spread more to a wider audience. We always hope they feel uplifted you know and appreciative of the culture and appreciative of the music and just to make them feel good. Our music just seems to be ageless and just to always stay the same, you know? And I think that's a special thing. American Mountain Music traces its roots back to the earliest days of colonial music and culture, but it lives and thrives to this day. Music from the Crooked Road is America's gift to the world, and no one plays it better than the White Top Mountain Band.